If you like this video, please consider supporting the Otokana channel over on Patreon. Thank you. Hello, welcome back to the episode three of the Color Theory series. This episode is going to be the episode in which we finally get to have a look at the 12 color palette that is based on the color wheel. As we know, this is the color wheel and the reason why artists talk a lot about the color wheel is because it is so important to how color works. We'll see later on in the series how this diagram actually shows us how to mix colors, how not to mix colors, so that we can have much better control of how our colors turn out. It helps us mute colors and it helps us avoid muting colors or some people like to say avoid making mud as well as getting a much more accurate color mixes for whatever subject you are painting. So it would make sense that if the color wheel is so important to doing color mixes that a palette that is based on the color wheel will help us out a lot. And that brings us to the point where I can finally answer the question that somebody asked a very long time ago that really inspired this series of if I could only buy 12 colors, then what color should I get? And I would definitely say get these 12 colors. In terms of do you really need to create a palette based on this? And the answer is that no, you don't have to have a palette that is based on these 12 colors at all. But if you want to get your head around color theory and be able to have good control with your color mixes, then this is a fantastic starting point. It's a great palette for learning about color theory, color mixing, and also color schemes. And so if you are in the process of learning color theory and everything that's related to color theory, I do recommend making a quick palette of these 12 colors so that you get to understand how color works. Once you understand everything, then you can create any palette you like and you'll know the pros and cons of each palette. I, for one, always use the 12 colors as a basis of my palette. And when budget allows, and I really want to explore a new brand and get to know it really well, then I actually buy the 12 colors that are on the color wheel so that I get to know the full chroma range of that brand. Now, because colors are relative and we all have a different feel as to where things should be, I am just going to talk about colors in terms of the positions in the color wheel rather than calling it yellow, yellow, orange, red, orange, red, because different people have different thoughts on that. What I've been doing personally in my practice is just labeling these A, B, C, D, E, F, and then doing A, B, C, D, E, F again, but in brackets so that I know which colors are pairs. Now that we have the color positions labeled, we can see that these are going to be pairs, that is going to be a pair, that is going to be a pair, and so on and so forth. And that knowledge comes in very, very handy when it comes to mixing colors and having that control. I will be showing you a list of colors I recommend and I will list them in terms of these positions and then I'll show you how you can use these position labels in your palette when you come to set up your colors. So these are the 12 colors that I tend to use for representing all the colors on the color wheel if I'm using all commercially available brands. As you can see, it's a mixture of Holbein's and some Daniel Smith and a few of the Schmincke colors. You can mix and match the brands you have or you want to try 
to your heart's content. The only one thing you do have to be specific about is this little guy. This is the ultramarine violet. And the thing with ultramarine violet is there's a huge variation in hue, which is what we think of when we say color, varies a lot. Some are very blue based and some are more purpley reddish color. And obviously that is going to shift you around the color wheel a lot. So for the ultramarine violet, you do have to be very specific about what brand you buy for this particular setup. Because what we want ultimately is for these two pairs to be perfectly matched so that they will mute each other out into a nice neutral grey. And I will show you how to do that and why that's important in a following episode. But for now, just know that this colour needs to be of very specific brands. And those brands are Schmincke, M. Graham, Block or Richardson brand colours are uh, perfectly match to go with this yellow. I personally use the Schmincke because that's the easiest one for me to get hold of. But besides the ultramarine violet, you can play around with brands as much as you like. And I'm going to show you what colors from each brand that I recommend as a good starting point. This is like when I showed you the split primary palette colors. They are my suggested starting point for finding your own colors. My color selection tends to be of transparent bright colors, but of course you don't have to use those. You can have a play around with it to see what suits you best. So these are the colors I normally use for my color wheel palette. As I said, it's a mixture of three different brands. And then these are the colors I recommend if you want to go for a purely Daniel Smith palette. And then for a Holbein only palette, I recommend these colors. And then for a Sennelier only palette, I recommend these colors. And if you want to go for a Schmincke only palette, then these are a good starting point. If you do want to select different colors, there's only one thing to remember, and I'll show you in the next episode how the pairs, so the A's, the B's, and the C's, and so on, should cancel each other out nicely. By canceling each other, I mean they mute each other to a nice neutral gray, and I will show you that in the next episode. So I would hold off on ordering your colors until you see that episode. I do also adjust this color wheel for practical uses, for my own uses, and I customize it. And again, I will show you that in a different episode later on in the series of how I customize it to make it work for me in practical terms. But for learning color theory, this is a really, really good palette. So you have your colors, you want to palette them. There are a few tips I have for you. So let's take a look at those. Now, I have to admit, you don't need this. 
It's just that I have been looking for a circular palette with 12 wells for so long. I scoured literally every page there is on palette on every website, every art shop there ever have been online. I have scoured through the palette section. You can find round palettes that have very frustrating 10 wells quite a lot, but 12 wells in a palette all the way around is very, very rare indeed. And I could not find an affordable ceramic round palette with 12 wells. And I really wanted it because it then perfectly matches the color wheels. You can get a ceramic round palette that has 12 wells from Stephen Quiller, but it's quite expensive. And then of course, shipping to the UK is gonna be really high. He does do plastic version, which is cheaper, but I always like my palette to be ceramic if I can. And then when I came to plan this series, I was like, I would really, really like, you know, this kind of palette, because then I can show you guys exactly where I'm taking the colors from in relation to the color palette. And then it occurred to me from middle of nowhere, deviled egg dishes. They're usually round and they have wells and they usually have 12 wells. Why? Because eggs come in half a dozen and dozens. So it totally makes sense for them to come in 12 wells. And they're very affordable. They're usually available from the US. We don't really have this tradition of the deviled egg plates but this was still very affordable on Amazon and this plate did turn out to be a lot bigger than I expected but I have seen plates that are a little bit more compact so if you do want to have a round ceramic palette that has 12 wheels so that it perfectly represents the color wheel I recommend checking out some deviled egg plates or dishes options even though it's absolutely massive and I don't know what to do with it after this, I'm still very, very happy to have found an affordable round ceramic 12 well palette option. So for this series, I am gonna use this as a demonstration purpose so you can see how I'm taking colors from the color wheel. However, you do not need to use a round palette at all. I learned color theory and I have been using color theory for a full year now without ever having had this palette. You can totally use a palette like this. And what I recommend is when you put these colors on the palette, also label the relative position of the colors around the color wheel. And the reason why that's useful is, I'll just show you my studio palette. When you have colors around a non-color wheel palette and you have other colors, it gets very confusing as to which color went with each other. And so what I always do is label the specific colors that are of the 12 colors and label the alphabet that corresponds to it. So we have here permanent yellow deep and I have A here. And then down here, I have Schmincke's Ultramarine Violet, which is its pair. And I label that with an A in brackets. So when I come to look at this, I'm like, I am using permanent yellow deep and I need to mute that now. What color is it that I need? Because they're not really related to each other, it can get very confusing as to what color you were supposed to do. And even after a year of doing this, I still forget which color goes with which because there's 12 colors. But I know this is an A, so I just need to look for the other A, which is right here. And then I'll know I just need to use the ultramarine violet. So I highly recommend labeling your colors relative to the color wheel so that when it comes to color mixing, it's a really easy job. So for example, if you are going to be creating a palette for doing this series, then I definitely recommend you re labeling them like this. And then you could do it down here for the rest of it, or you could carry on depending on the palette you have. It doesn't really matter because you'll still know, even if you carry on here, which color goes 
with which pair. And then you can pull your colors in the right place and label them with the color name if you like. So I've labeled my palette and I have the colors laid out in the same order as the color wheel. So let's set this palette up. So that's all the colors set up in the palette in the same order as the color wheel. As I said, use whatever brand you like, mix them up if you like. And the only brand you have to be careful of is the ultramarine violet, where you have to have very specific brands. Now that we have the palette, in the following episodes, we are going to cover how the pairing works and how they help to give you better control of muting a color or not muting a color, how you can create earthy tones from these really bright colors. You can create every single color you like with ease from this palette, as well as how you can combine all those features of the color wheel to better match whatever color it is that you want to mix. You're never going to have to deal with unexpected, muted, muddy colors ever again. So I hope you have a lot of fun shopping for and setting up your own color wheel palette. If you do set up your own color wheel palette, then please do share on all social media and tag me so I can check it out because we all love seeing brand new, fresh poured palettes. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode where I'm going to show you exactly how to avoid mud, how to avoid unexpected muted tones by actually showing you how to mute out every color on this palette. Because if you know how to do it, then you will know how to avoid doing it. So have fun setting up your palette and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!